Hello and welcome to another episode of, to be honest, a show with a clown, a duck, and a degenerate. Subscribe to the To Be Honest Patreon. It's just five dollars a month. <laughs> uh, well worth your time. Well shilling. worth your money. <laughs> we upload exclusive episodes there every single month. If you're lucky, without fail. Pretty much anything goes in these episodes. There are no holes barred. Everything is uncensored. Definitely, definitely worth listening to uh, for the exposed video alone. We've got a private Discord server which we actually interact with on a regular basis, unlike other Patreon Discords. So you know we're different. We're very much different. It's worth your money. <laughs> so yeah, apologies for shilling. Uh, very early on. We always forget to do it for some reason, so I thought I'd get it out of the way early. But anyway, speaking of apologies, FoosyTube, who I think has apologized like four times in the last week, have I got that right? He needs a Guinness World Record for the amount of apologies a single person has done. I think his first apology gets the world record for the quickest turnaround, because literally just after he said this bad word, singing along to some rap what, lyrics, Which he was word was that? For the, for the Patreons, which word was that? Colossal? No comment on that. No comment on that. <laughs> But yeah, he was just singing along to some rap song. I don't even know which one. He says this bad word, which is one of the lyrics in the song, and just instant apology mode, which then nobody even cared about. Like, he didn't need to do it. It was just really a bizarre interaction. I mean, just utterly insane. <laughs> and he's going a bit insane because he's doing this 24-hour live stream thing, which is basically him on camera all the time, every day. I think he was even live streaming himself sleeping. So he's recording himself just about to fly out to wherever the fuck he was going. And uh, he met up with this girl. A random girl. Yeah, just this random girl he meets in a hotel lobby that's clearly drunk. Wasn't it at an airport, I thought? Yeah, it was an airport lobby. Oh, it was like a bar or something at an airport, or like a charging station. Yeah, that's what I said. No, you, you said, said hotel lobby. <laughs> okay, is this important? I don't think you sleep at an airport. I think you get... I mean, it, it doesn't really airport. matter because yeah it doesn't really matter where you met her anyway all right yeah. I, I just want to I, I know before you finish your story i just want to say i was laughing because fuzzy posted a video called i messed up i thought that jbl speaker was his penis i thought he just had his cock out in the <laughs> thumbnail <laughs> look at look Wouldn't at the past, fucking so. orange Pyro, what kind of weird cocks have you been looking at because that doesn't look anything like a cock i i literally just looked at it <laughs> i mean we don't second, we bro. don't want to know the answer to that we do not want to know this sort of Cox, he's been looking yeah, at. Yeah, that's fair as well. That's a fair point. It just doesn't look like a cock at all. Maybe his penis is asymmetrical. What's wrong with that? It could be another person's cock. <laughs> just sat, he sat on someone's lap. Like. <laughs> this is you coming out of the closet, isn't it? <laughs> Fleshy thing at the bottom in between his pants. Like, I, I really don't think that's a reach. We're going to put this in the video yeah. on stream. Like, If you see a fucking cock in this image, you're gay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just going to say, comment if you do. Nope, you're gay. <laughs> Diagnosed. Diagnosed instantly. To be honest, I always thought Fousey was gay, to get it back on track. But he did approach this girl, this 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 very drunk girl in a hotel lobby. Airport, Airport lobby. Airport lobby, whatever the fuck. Who gives a <laughs> let's shit? De let's debate the differences, actually, for the next ten minutes. I mean, she's clearly very drunk. The chat knows she's drunk. Everyone can see that she's drunk. I mean, Fousey can see that she's drunk. But he decides, like, oh, I'm going to try and make out with her anyway because... I want to impress my little children Zuma fans for some reason. I don't know why he does that, but I mean, it's a bit weird, honestly. But like, then she tells him she's a victim of sex trafficking. I mean, she might not be, but this is like, oh my God, what shall I do about this? Let me give you some money instantly like that, because that's his whole profile. I mean, that's what he's been doing for years. <laughs> money fixes everything. Back when he was make, making like social experiments and pranks and stuff. He would do this with homeless people. Those were like, all staged as well, right? He was all, all of them were yeah, staged. Were staged. Like, again, like, yeah. I don't think staging pranks was too bad because everyone did it, everyone. But like, he would even stage the suicide pranks where he was like talking someone off of like a bridge and then they all ended up being fake. I mean, yeah, just repeating what I said in my video, but yeah, go on. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I just actually remembered a specific timestamp from a six year old video. Yeah, okay, my bad. Right, as I was saying, he's instantly like, let me give you some money. Let me give you some money. I've got to make myself look good on camera. He got his fans to raise money too. That's I right. I think up to $2,000. Yeah, so she ends up with quite a bag from this little little encounter. Um, I mean, it's more than he'd normally pay a prostitute, probably. I mean, that was revealed. That's actually true. <laughs> so then they go off to like, well, they go off somewhere. We don't know where they go. But it is theorized they go off to a hotel. No, airport bathroom. <laughs> bathroom. Where something happens... We don't know what happens. Something happens. Maybe nothing happened. We don't know. But FusiTube comes back, gets on camera again, 
And he says something did happen. I think the exact quote was like, I joined the Mile High Club, inferring that he fucked her. I don't know how he joins her. He says that. He calls it that. Oh, yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. He 120 foot club or something. And then I think his face dropped as soon as he read chat and realized what he just said. So then he starts instantly backtracking and claiming it's all a joke. I mean, it was just a prank. You got pranked by FusiTube. Obviously, it's not very convincing. The chat doesn't buy it for a second. Um, So Fusi is like, oh, no, I got caught out here. What the hell do I do? I know, I'll proceed to have a mental breakdown. Just a classic Fusitude moment, really. So chat is obviously very upset with him. They feel that he's just taken advantage of a drunk victim. A drunk victim of sex trafficking that he just that he just paid money to. The whole thing's bad, but the fact that she said she's a sex traffic victim in his mind was like, oh, she, she'll want to have sex. Nice one, man. Okay, this is actually epic. I'm going through the uh, response video he made called I Messed is Up. His penis, is his he penis has out a, in the whole okay, thing? Okay, sadly no penis, but he's actually holding a dog during the apology. Oh, what? Oh, no. He is actually holding a dog in his arms. If you look closely, there's there's a ukulele in the back seat too. Yeah, it's it's somewhere in the boot. Oh, what the fuck? That you say is, that as a joke. That's but- epic. That is epic. And he purposely got a small dog so he can hold it because T. Martin's dog was too big. Is it, is it the little pink white poodle thing? Yeah, it actually looks like Mike Ehrmantraut a bit. The dog looks like Mike Ehrmantraut? Does the dog look like Mike Ehrmantraut? I can't even watch it because he's put so many fucking ads on this thing. I can't even get through it. I click here and there's suddenly like 50 fucking mid-rolls. <laughs> Oh, do you know if there's a way in which we could see how many ads he's put on this? Nah, it, they they hit that on purpose. They hit that on purpose. Some people can still see it because I remember someone posting your um cruelty squad video and the whole bar was yellow. <laughs> oh yeah, I put an ad in every two minutes because uh, they just never they never trigger. That's apparently what all the YouTubers do now. Well, I think they're not triggering because you put them every two minutes. I swear to fuck, this 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 video will be like a horizontal yellow bar all the way across. Yeah, he, he ends it with a sponsor, by the way, uh, Colossal for Better Help, at the very end, like when he puts the dog down. Are you joking? No, I'm, I'm taking the piss, yeah, no, but yeah, the fact you even thought about it for a second, the fact that you had to think. He's brought on Muffin here, that's the name of his dog. Pretty sad that I know that, but I know that. Yeah, imagine if the entire video, I messed up, he doesn't actually acknowledge what he did at the airport, he just goes, guys, what you've heard is true, and I'm really sorry, my hairline is tattooed. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past him. He's just, it's so weird to look at him. He's like so clearly fake. Watch the whole interaction you had with that woman. And with peace and love, you came off as very creepy, like a predator. Seemed like this drunk woman who had already been taken advantage of by so many people. You should have left it when you helped her financially. Instead, you were touching her and initiating kisses with her. Then you gave the perception that you had sex with her. You can't get mad at people being upset at the perception you created. It was hard to watch. I think that that's the real killer, like just saying it was a hard watch at the end. I've got to watch this video now because I take it he's denying it. Uh, he's probably downplaying it. I'm surprised he's not deleting comments. I'll be honest, like unless he's got moderators, the content train's probably too fast for him to do that. If you keep uploading, like people just, yeah, you don't even have time to moderate. I want to find the people in the comments supporting him because I bet they're going to have like a football picture and they're just going to be like a three-year-old. Oh, the dislikes. They're not very good. Oh, you know he got banned on Twitch too? About twelve hours ago. What for? For for the for the for, oh, for, for the thing, yeah. No, I don't think we know that. I and mean, it might be for a completely different reason. We haven't been given one yet. He got the dog in 2015, like the certified. You know, like how you get dogs that you can take on uh, planes and stuff because they're like a like a therapy dog for people with like anxiety and stuff. His dog wears like a sachet, just saying "certified apology dog," so he can bring it on the plane with him. Oh yeah, I found so because it's it blew up on the you know the Reddit live stream fails, and I I found a comment that was saying whenever I see Fuzi, I think about the amazing videos Colossal is crazy made, and links them. And a guy replies saying, "Damn, that first video turned really weird." The narrator describes a black guy as Mister Midnight. <laughs> <laughs> sweating, wait, sweating an entire family bucket of KFC, and probably had to move chicken bones out of the way just to set up the camera. The guy, the guy commenting, then just says, "Colossal is crazy." Sounds like as much a piece of shit as Fousey. <laughs> it's called a joke, you fucking idiot. <laughs> In his acknowledgement of what he did wrong, he said, "Because I just watched the part of the video, I've been on a dopamine high so lately. I've been drunk off dopamine." And maybe I need to slow and down a little alcohol. bit. And alcohol. I don't think he drinks, right? Is he Muslim? Well, yeah, but when does that have stopped him from doing literally anything that he's apologized for? Yeah, I don't think point. Muslims have sex with 
sex traffic victims in a bathroom. <laughs> is he denying that he actually fucked her in a hotel airport bathroom? I mean, That's what I was saying. It's a video. Prank. It's going to be loads of waffling. If it's a joke, if it genuinely is like a little prank, I don't give a shit. I really don't give a shit. I mean, I, he's playing it off as a prank. I mean, if it was just a prank and he's joking, like he didn't actually fuck her in a hotel bathroom, airport bathroom, then I don't care. I really don't care. I mean, he's still he's still made out of her. Uh, okay, so he said he didn't fuck her. He said he's been celibate for over a year. And he says instead yeah, right. of fucking in the airport, he prays in the airport. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, that's, God. That's he's the, uh, yeah. It's that's like the, the apology. Debasing. To all the FoozyTube haters, I just want to point out he didn't actually fuck her. He took her to a prayer room. And they prayed for a little bit and then left. Yeah, if he wasn't actually joking, and it's not a joke at all, and it's not a prank at all, and he did fuck her in a hotel airport bathroom, then yeah, obviously, like, that's that's so messed up. <laughs> we'll never know. Well, I feel like we do know, but we can't say for sure. We don't know 100% for a fact, unless this um this girl comes forward. She might forward. come forward when because she's Because he basically s- essentially just paid her with her um sex trafficked money. To fuck her in a hotel bathroom. Oh, I didn't even... Jesus, yeah, I didn't even think about it from that angle. Essentially. I mean, he's definitely purchased prostitutes in the past. He denied that. He was lying about that back then. So, I thought he admitted to that. And I mean, obviously he has be- now. Okay. Uh, right. But back when it was first alleged, he was denying it. He lies about things retroactively as they happen, when they're happening. And then several years later or months later, then he confirms that they did actually happen. Essentially proving that he was lying at that time. I mean, he's a liar. So, of course he did that. So we just got to wait three years. If he's not dead by then, he'll he'll come forward about it. I mean, I think as he's streaming more and stuff now, like that timeline of him admitting to something is going to get shorter and shorter. It'll probably reach the point where it's just the next day he'll admit it. So instead of being months, it's like the next stream. Oh yeah, I did that thing. I think everyone said. Yeah, that's what he does. That's what he's done historically. I'm high on life. I'm high on dopamine. Now I was going to say, like, how does he have time to hire prostitutes when he's too busy, like, camping outside Drake's hotel 24-7 and trying to contact Drake? Oh, yeah, he DM'd him again, too. <laughs> he sent him up against Instagram. What did he say? He was saying to, like, Drake, please come through. Like, I want to tell you my story. You know, I want to talk to you. He's been doing a lot of that. He's, just, he's an attention seeker and always has been, so he's trying to get in with the right people there. It's crazy that he keeps becoming relevant. Like, he falls off and then he comes back. It's not that crazy true people like watching la insanity i mean it's not that crazy if you're willing to do certain things to get attention you will get attention and anyone can do that there is no skill involved whatsoever because wasn't he kind of on like the straight and narrow for a bit like he hasn't any controversies apart from like the n-word thing in the like the last year or two didn't he start the whole boxing thing with keemstar and he's like being normal in quotes but i guess as soon as he starts getting attention again he just goes off the rails. Fusi was doing the boxing thing. I mean, yeah, it was to kind of like reignite his career, but obviously he just completely sucked at it. Like he was just not good at it. He takes steroids and shit, like he's working out every single day. So he thought that like, maybe that would translate into him being a good fighter, except it didn't. That was his way of trying to get back into the limelight, gain attention, like jumping on this new trend of trying to become a influencer boxing, inverted commas, Obviously that has failed, so now he's doing this, this new live stream thing. Kick and rumble, they're offering people big deals. Maybe he's hoping to get one of those. He's just got to build up his profile, gain more attention, get more traction, get more people to watch him. So he's doing the things he's doing, and he's doing it all the time, 24-7. He's overreacting to things. People like to see that. You know, the kids like to see the drama. They like to see the fucking, all that shit. And that's why he's doing what he's doing. It's very transparent. But you say, like, yeah, he goes into this cycle of very, very depressed and not really doing anything and not doing any of this dramatic stuff. Yeah, because that is the tube cycle. He gets all this attention. He gets fat he as gets, well. Yeah, the, his whole body changes. I was going to say, like, he's then- had more... He's literally had more body transformations than Christian Bale. Like, he must be on kit to just, you know, flip-flop from being basically fat to, like, you know, shredded. Because he's done that, like, three or four times now, right? It's called a yo-yo diet. So he will do that all the time. He'll go fat, he'll go skinny, he'll go muscular, then back again. And this the cycle repeats. I mean, that's everything with FusiTube. It's like a whole lunar cycle. Um, and that's <laughs> with his personality as well. He does look a bit like the moon as well, so it does fit. He'll go through this, this phase trying to garner loads of attention, and he'll get it because that shit does work, and it'll work for anyone. Then he doesn't know what to do with it. He can't handle it. Because there are going to be a lot of people that are criticizing him for the attention that he's obviously getting. So it's like a vicious double-edged sword. It's a vicious cycle. Hopefully he has a redemption arc. Yeah, the fucking 20th redemption arc. Are you truly redeemed if you keep having the same redemption arc? Get one or two chances. Red Dead Redemption 2? True. 
Red Dead Redemption 3. Red Dead Redemption is getting ported to Switch and PS4. $50, by the way, for a game that's not even changed at all. Good old Rockstar. But yeah, so he'll get this attention. Negative attention, mostly, because it's rarely positive, although he tries to get that. It never really works. But of course, he doesn't know what to do with it, and he can't handle the criticism at the same time. So what he'll do is he'll employ people, and this has been proven now, he'll employ people to remove the negative comments or the things people are saying about him, whether that's a video. Obviously, he did it with my video. He tried to take it down, but he's doing it with the comments as well. And he's literally hired, in the past, hired people to sit there and retroactively delete comments and censor what people are saying about him. But of course, what he does attracts that type of person and attracts that type of comment. So it's like I said, a very vicious cycle, a double-edged sword, you can't have one without the other. And that's why he regresses into the state of just complete depression. Um, so it's really his own doing. A lot of people call it like a, a bipolar episode or a manic episode or, or something like that. No, it's just him doing it to himself. It's like a yo-yo diet for his personality. That's exactly right. That's how you should think about Fusi. Like, he's a yo-yo person. Round and round and round. And he's been doing the same thing for years and years and years. You probably know the Fusi Lord. Do you know who the person in the car is whilst he's giving the apology? Or is it just some random? Nothing he's done recently I've been paying attention to. Even the boxing, I didn't even watch the full fight. You just saw when they compared him being punched to the logo, probably. That was his first one, wasn't it? Oh, he's had more? I think he had two fights. Is that right? Two fights? I just, he lost both, though. I he lost both, yeah. I know he lost, that's all I remember. I mean, I'm not a boxing expert or anything, but like, he literally used his face as a boxing glove. I think his ego was so big, he thought he could turn up with like a couple weeks training and win. Quite possibly. He thought he was big enough because he looked big, but like all that muscle that he has is, what do you call it? There's a technical term for it. It's like beauty muscle or something. Yeah. Muscle which just like looks good on the surface, looks good for pictures, but really there's like nothing beneath it. But he has no actual strength. It's like aesthetic muscles, right? When you work muscle groups, you've got like the actual core muscles, but then you've got just aesthetic ones like on the surface. The aesthetic muscles. I mean, that's a good way to look at Fusi, like on the surface. I mean, he doesn't even look that good, to be fair. <laughs> so I'm not going into his appearance, but like his personality. On the surface, he tries to portray himself as this like really nice guy, really religious guy. He's trying to help people out. He's trying to motivate people. I mean, he tried to be a motivational speaker at one point. So on the surface, he's trying to exude this personality of this really great person. But... Beneath the skin, deep inside, he's actually just a fucking piece of shit, just like every other streamer and YouTuber. The main thing that I've always disliked about Fusi is not the fact he is a piece of shit. There are many pieces of shits. I'm a piece of shit. Everyone in this fucking call is probably a piece of shit at some point. The main thing that I dislike about Fusi is that he tries so hard to manipulate, mislead people into believing that he's the exact opposite of that. He's really good at manipulating, like... It's like with the N-word thing you mentioned, just he swapped instantly into apology mode, like off the top. Just like he's got it, he's just got it down to a T. I mean, I personally don't think he's good at manipulating at all. Maybe that's because like I've watched enough videos and I, I see the signs. That's and because he's such a good manipulator. He's convinced you that he's not a good manipulator. I think his tactics are all the same. They're very transparent. At the same time, I think it's very easy to manipulate children and people who haven't been manipulated before or aren't accustomed to seeing that manipulation before. But if you know what to look for, and you've seen this happen before, it's all very transparent, it's all very obvious, um, and it's quite clear what he's trying to do. I still can't believe he had a fucking dog in the apology. <laughs> yeah, he brings on the little white muffin dog. He's a very effeminate guy, actually, despite all his muscles. He's a very, very effeminate guy. He buys these little poodle dogs, which are stereotypical of, like, Hollywood housewives in their mid-40s. These little poodles that you can keep in your handbags. You know the ones I'm talking about. So those are the dogs he, he goes for. I think everyone gets those these days. I think it's almost like a hipster <laughs> trend thing at this point. He dresses this white one up in, like, pink bows and, like, pink outfits... It's very effeminate. I mean, knowing him, it's just for the fucking algorithm. He knows, like, a cute pet's going to help get views. He probably doesn't even care for it. <laughs> I always thought he was gay. Maybe that's why he's fucking so many prostitutes. It's just a way for him to compensate. Just because he heard you thought he was gay? Like, no, that no one else thought it. It was just you. So <laughs> he instantly was like, I'm going to sleep with as many women as possible to prove Colossal wrong. Did he um ever stalk you kind of Colossal? Like, did he ever, like, clearly follow everything you were doing? Nah. 
when you were doing the videos? No, nah, credit to him, he was not. No? Okay. Was that Jay Station? Jay Station did that, I think, right? Well, Jay Station yeah. did that to Nerd. He didn't do that to me. That's right. Jay Station was, like, scared of me or something for some reason. I have no idea why. But, like, Nerd <laughs> City, his, all his, like, fucking attack was, like, leveraged against Nerd. He was trying to dox him. He was trying to get his address. He was trying to fucking threaten him. He was doing yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, because I think Nerd's so bit. careful about that. Yeah, Nerd's really careful about it. But, like, Jay Station was genuinely... Jay Station didn't stand a chance. But he was genuinely trying that shit with, uh, with Nerd. But he did absolutely nothing to me. And I was like, why the fuck not? Why not? And I literally said that at one point. I messaged Jay Station and was like, why aren't you attacking me? Why aren't you going for me? <laughs> Come at me, bro. Didn't he try doxing you at one point? I think he did dox Nerd City, or at least he tried to very hard, right. but not me. It was pretty interesting, but I genuinely think he was like scared of me. And we had this bit plan for part two, which will never ever come about. It might. <laughs> 2020, 2030, maybe? Well, it won't be out on my channel. That's all I'm saying. It's not going to be out on my channel because it's like the topic is dead for me now and I've got no interest in it. But even so, like, we had this bit... I just looked him up, and I thought he was uploading again. But you click on the videos, and it is actual 144p. So I think someone has just re-uploaded all of his old videos, pretending to be him. And they've got a PayPal link as well. Their PayPal name is probably, like, their full name and their date of birth, which is, like, two years it ago. It might actually be him. Well, it's called JStation here, but, like, if you look at the actual... The videos seem legit, like it's him, but I mean, you'd know if they're old videos or not, because obviously you and Nerd... I don't think Colossus just... looked anything at, to do with Jay Station since the video. What's he even doing right now? Is it just like completely gone underground or...? I genuinely don't know because I haven't been following it. Once I've made the video, like, I'm done, like, that's it. Maybe a little bit of what's he doing now type thing, but after that, I really don't care. That's why I haven't been paying attention to FouseyTube either. You asked me if I'm... if FouseyTube stalked me. No, I don't think he did at all. But at the same time, like, I haven't been stalking FouseyTube either. Sometimes I get sent stuff, because obviously I did make two videos on him. So sometimes I get sent stuff that FouseyTube has done in the past, or has done recently, sorry. But beyond that, like, I have no idea. I haven't watched any, I haven't tuned into his live stream a single time, or anything like that. So if FouseyTube Part 3 genuinely does happen, yeah, I'll have to watch all of this stuff that I have not been following in the present. Quite possibly, like, what's happened now could be the tipping point, could be the breaking point for him to go back. Ah, uh, back to the yo-yo. He's at the peak and he's going back down now. I don't think this will be it, but um, it could be it. It'll take some. It normally takes something huge to trigger him back into the state. So the most recent one was obviously him losing the boxing fight quite spectacularly. Forgot, he forgot how to box when he was in the ring. He never learned how to box properly and just focused on, like, trying to hit hard. But the only hard hitting he did was with his face. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, speaking of malicious people out there trying to obtain your identity, we have a way to prevent that happening to you with ExpressVPN. Just the with most the busy obvious fall season route. just around the corner, <laughs> you might be looking for wholesome, convenient meals for. Oh, fuck it up. I'm reading the wrong ad. I'm reading the wrong fucking ad. Keep that in. Keep that Watching in. Watching Netflix without using ExpressVPN <laughs> is like buying tickets to a Taylor Swift concert, but only being allowed to watch the opening act. Why do you need ExpressVPN? In your own words, tell your audience about how Netflix has different content libraries for every country. Netflix has thousands of shows, but without a VPN, you only get access to a fraction of that based on your location. How does ExpressVPN unblock content, in your own words? Let's you change your online location, control where you want Netflix or other streaming websites to think you're located. Personal endorsement! Tell your audience about a show you've been watching using ExpressVPN. Uh, what shows have you been watching, fellas? Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad. the only <laughs> thing it's left so to watch it's before not... they remove it. <laughs> it's, it's not available in the country I'm in, so I switch it to America. Are you serious? You can't watch Breaking Bad in Australia? No. Nah, there's actually a lot of countries you can't watch it in on Netflix. What the fuck? Well, you definitely need ExpressVPN for that. Yeah, if you want to watch Spider-Man... Into the Spider-Verse in America, you have to swap your location to India, apparently. So be smart. Stop paying full price for streaming services and only getting access to a fraction of their content. Get your money's worth at expressvpn.com slash tbh. And don't forget to use my link at expressvpn.com slash tbh to get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. Even if you're not going on vacation, 
Summer's all about a vacation state of mind. <laughs> Whether I want to listen to Blade on repeat or just Die. need to fuck off or just need to retreat into my own head for a bit. I love creating my own summer soundtrack by popping in my Raycon wireless earbuds. There's so much going around all summer. Sometimes you need some upbeat music to pump before you see people or to stay calm with some guided meditation. What do you listen to on your Raycons, now? Let me have a look. Let me have a look, actually. i got to open my album. Just prepare yourself for the worst music taste known to mankind. Right, so for my meditation, I've got rain sounds. And then oh for my, my workout God. music, it is uh, Machine Girl, Blade, Echo 2K. Why, that, I'm that, sorry, can, I, can we just answer this? Like, Why are you listening to rain sounds when you live in the United Kingdom where it rains every single day? <laughs> it rains in the UK whenever you don't want it to rain. Every day. So It rains that. every day. Yeah, but like, like, okay, yeah, but how calming is it, right? Like when you're outside Well, window, yes, that like, mean, like yes, it's window, obviously you not calming at all, but then why are you listening to it? Because there's no rain at night. <laughs> yeah, it's scientifically proven it doesn't rain at night. Yeah, it doesn't actually <laughs> rain when the sun goes down. That's been proven many times. <laughs> Right, anyway, so... <laughs> look look my, it up, Colossal, he's telling the truth. Let me tell you right now, Raycons are the best way to listen. Use earbud tap functions to toggle between three customizable sound profiles, noise isolation, and awareness mode. Raycons have 32-hour battery life, including eight hours of playtime, so you can listen to what you want, when you want, for a really long time. Like FuzzyTube crying in an apology video. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, listeners can get 15% off their Raycon order at buyraycon.com forward slash to be honest. That's right, raycon.com forward slash to be honest to save 15% on Raycons. Buyraycon.com slash to be honest. Yeah, so get your Raycons. You can listen to this podcast. You can listen to my beautiful voice, Pyro's kind of screechy Birmingham. What do you call your voice? Shit. His voice is shit. <laughs> uh, British, I think. British. And you can listen to... Uh, Dolan Dark's nasal drip duck sounds. <laughs> <laughs> With the busy full season, or I guess spring for me, just around the corner, you might be looking for wholesome, convenient meals for jam-packed days. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, can help you fuel up fast with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle. Level up with Gourmet Plus options prepared to perfection by chefs and ready to eat in record time. Treat yourself to upscale meals with premium ingredients like broccolini, leeks, truffle butter, and asparagus. Too busy running around during the day to think about lunch? Keep your energy up with Lunch To Go. Effortless, wholesome meals like grain bowls and salad toppers that are ready to eat when you're on the go. No microwave required. Head to factormeals.com slash tbh50 and use code tbh50 to get 50% off. That's code tbh50 at factormeals.com slash tbh50 to get 50% off. That ad read sure was amazing, guys. And you know what game has a hunger mechanic? Pretty much every single game that's ever been made, ever. <laughs> every, yeah, every game in yeah, history. But, yeah, but fear and hunger is actually good, Except though. Except chess. So. Yeah, chess. I mean, if it goes on long enough, I guess. Do do like the tier list you did in Cruelty Squad, but you do a tier list of all the food you can eat in Fear and Hunger. <laughs> of all the food you can eat. So tell us a little bit about the video game, Pyro. Well, I mean, you didn't make it, obviously. Just some Finnish guy did it. It's always a Finnish guy. Yeah. It's always some mentally <laughs> some reason Finnish bloke. The actual ratio of mentally unhinged Finnish people and making video games that I end up covering. There's at least one video so far, but it's the, the, there's so many games I play in the background and then it's always done by a fucking Finnish person. Fear and Hunger is really good. I was going to do a I'm working on doing a video on it right now, but it's like, I think the, the skill entry to get in is just insane because like RNG in that game just absolutely rolls you. What is the game? Do you want to give like a very brief synopsis of what the Isometric, game is? top down, very sad, very less sad game. You die a lot. You definitely, definitely die a lot. And most of the time it's really not even your fault. I think it just became infamous because it's like, it's one of those JRPG maker games. It wouldn't it be an FRPG if it's made by a Finnish person? True. The reason why it became so infamous is the skill entry to get in is just in, not not even that, just just the commitment you need. It's it's fucking insane. So so like Baldur's Gate three just came out, and that's like that has a slight RNG mechanic with the dice rolling, but you can affect it with stuff like you know if you raise your strength or you raise your charisma, the dice rolls are better. And then even then the dice rolls are like 
it's not even like you know that's not going to break the game you'll probably just fail a speech check and not get a little quirky bit of dialogue or like maybe you'll get two gold instead of five bits of gold but in fear and hunger so it's got this mechanic called a coin toss and enemies you fight uh they'll like when you initiate combat with them they've got a chance to do like a super special move that's pretty common it's like every third turn or something and what comes up on your screen is a coin showing heads or tails and it, it's just a coin flip you get to choose whether you think it will be heads or tails and you flip the coin and if it's good you win and the enemy doesn't attack and if you lose and you this get... is in every fight yeah right? this every is pretty, fight like if you don't know how toss. to cheese the enemies it, it is literally every fight yeah like, like you have to basically cheese the enemies to even properly proceed without taking like you know losing a limb or something but well, i'll get into that but yeah like and you also get this other item which is genius called a lucky coin and you'd think oh, okay so that's going to improve my odds but all the lucky coin does is throw another fucking coin on the screen at the same time so if you pick heads both the coins could still be tails and you get fucked now that doesn't sound too bad because you could save scum like you know pretty much anyone does in video games but the saving mechanic is also a coin toss so you could do like a good 40 minutes into the what? game what you go to a bed to rest because there's no auto saving you don't save when you enter a new area nothing like that and then you go to a bed and you got to do a coin toss if you win you get you, you get to save and if you don't you get attacked by a group of enemies oh you get attacked as well that's awesome are they are the save spaces kind of spaced apart like how campfires and dark souls were you know like there's quite a big distance between the next save point yeah there, there's a there's a fair distance between them again there are i think the reason why it got so popular is like the, the sweats found ways to like cheese the game and stuff like if you kill there's so much stuff that just isn't told to you like for example if you kill every enemy on a floor you can actually never fail the coin toss. If you kill every enemy and then fail the coin toss, it will just say, oh, you didn't save. And then you can just try it again. So, yeah, there are, there are ways to cheese it. There's also a limb loss mechanic, and it is just fucking cruel. You so, said the game got popular because it has such a high skill entry, but isn't it also because it's quite repulsive? Yeah, true. That is, like, yeah. The game's quite You literally visceral. can't stream the game without getting banned. They, they had to release, like, a nudity mod that covers all the penises with, like, a pine cone. Oh. With a little pine cone. <laughs> It's kind of like on th on theme of Colossal, what was Colossal saying is it earlier. What? <laughs> like you're playing a game with all these penises in it. Like, come on. <laughs> that's probably why he's seeing cock everywhere. Yeah, maybe maybe that's the reason. The Fuji 2 penis earlier. But yeah, like there's a, a limb mechanic as well. So when enemies attack you, they'll basically attack a limb. And if they get a hit, there's a pretty high chance that you'll lose that limb. It's like full out. Yeah, yeah, but like... You know how you get like your limb crippled you just you know sleep in a bed or you use a stim pack and it's fine that that doesn't happen like if you lose a limb it's not broken it falls off like like that's it it's gone for, for, for the rest of the and and you can lose can you target you can, can you target because obviously like there are big naked ogre creatures in the game can you target their cock can you target <laughs> their cock yeah you can cut off their cock but their cock actually attacks you it, it stabs you um, are, you joking? Joking? Of course it does. are you joking? No, no, that's real. It's it's, no, called, it's a, called a it's called a stinger, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, the best case scenario, the best limb you could lose is your arm, because that just means you can't two hands like really good weapons. Okay. And then if you lose both your arms, you can't attack anymore. And then if you lose one leg, that's all right. If you lose both legs, you're reduced to crawling around for the rest of the game, and you crawl so slowly. You can lose both your arms and your legs, and you're still... And still complete the game? Yeah, yeah, but it's what like... What the fuck? You, there's no way for it to... Yeah, you can get your limbs back later, but it's like a really secret way and shit. Like, you know, just stuff you'd never know, like, first time playthrough. I swear you play a game and you're like, this is fucking insufferable and hard to play. I'm gonna do a video on it. But yeah, the, the game's good, but it's, it's really fucking hard. So, like, like, enemies can attack your limbs, you can attack theirs as well. So, like, you can chop off an enemy's arms. Now, like, if you hit an enemy in the head, uh, it's like a one-tap, but the chance to do that is, like, in the decimals. So, it's just so fucking impossible to do. Do you have your own um, penis that they can attack? Yeah, no, sadly no, not. You don't there's no, get there's the no privilege. penis. But, uh, no. Well, you can play as a little child, so that'd be pretty fucking weird. The kid's like a... No, no, there's only four characters you can play as at the start. Like, everyone else is a party member. You, you never control them. Uh, I guess during combat, actually, yeah, but, like, not in the actual overworld, like, moving and shit. There's one thing you can actually do that's really fucked in that game. So, so that kid uh, that you see pretty early on, you can sell him to this guy called Pocket Cat, like real life. Yeah, you can literally just sell him to some <laughs> fucking furry, and then he gives you like a really overpowered uh, claymore. I mean, it sounds like you're just playing as Andrew Tate. <laughs> Does the child have its fate revealed? Like you find its dead body later in the game? Nah, you just, or... you, I don't think you ever see the kid again. But like, 
I think you get locked. You need the kid to get like the best ending or something because it's like you, you know games like that, right? The, like the most useless character or the most useless weapon always gets like super powerful later on. Just garbage like that. Yeah, I think I watched a video essay on it, so I don't have to watch your video. Oh, cheers, mate. <laughs> <laughs> always a good thing when you don't have to watch a slot. Doesn't video. it have like a shitload of hidden mechanics or hidden like endings you can find? I can't think of yeah, any off so the top like, of my head, but like like I said earlier about the uh, the limb stuff. So if you lose a limb, it, it's gone. It's not like you pick it up after combat and you can like reattach it. Like, like it just disappears. So you, you'll always at a disadvantage for the rest of the game but there's a way that you can get all your limbs back so like if you get two of your party members and they're like you know they're both fucking limbless you can do this ritual called like a, a marriage where they actually fuck and then they uh they form into like one person so they just turn into like this fleshy looking mutant but then you actually get all your limbs back and then you can do it again with a third person and it just looks like a fucking troglodyte or something well so you can have sex with the characters in your party is yeah. the first, isn't the second game like very different from the first? Yeah, the first one's like a medieval, like set in the medieval period, it's like knights and stuff. But then the second one is set uh, in the 1940s, like during World War II. Like I might actually just have to install a mod that lets you save anywhere or something, I swear. You'll be like everyone that has a good Isaac run going and it's like, yeah, I'm going to save scum. <laughs> I don't want to redo 40 minutes. Fallout 3 had a huge problem with that. So like you'd get uh, speech checks and stuff. And it would always be a percentage, and the higher your charisma, the uh, the better the percentage would be. But what people would do, myself included, is, is like, you just save before the conversation, and everyone puts their charisma to like one, so they can spend it in actual better stuff, like intelligence, to get more skill points. So, you just get a 1% chance to actually pass the speech check, but you just keep save scumming it. So you'd get 100% eventually. And then in uh, they fixed it in New Vegas, because it was like... It wasn't a percentage chance anymore. Like, if you didn't have enough skill points and a certain skill, you just, you'd fail, like, guaranteed. I like how you say all that, and then you're literally doing a video on coin flip the video game. Yep. <laughs> it's, it's like, I, I can't even defend it. I think that's what gets most people angry is the saving mechanic. Because if the combat was a coin toss, at least you had a guaranteed save. But that's the thing about the game, like, nothing is guaranteed. Like, even saving. Yeah, you can't, you can't save scum the coin flip to save. Yeah, like, it's like what can't. I mentioned, though, about the lucky coin. Like, you think it's lucky. Like, no, it's just another coin. It, it increases the odds, like, what, what's even the numbers? Like, 25%, I guess? 0 0.5 times 0 0.5. Yeah, well, whatever you said. Is there actually anything that made you want to do it? Just Is it literally just because it's, like, different? Like, most of the games you do videos on? Yeah, I, yeah no, it literally... And 4chan, yeah. sort of. Okay, not that last bit. Not that last bit. <laughs> nah, it's just it's just mental illness of like being attracted to weird games and stuff. It, it, it's like a... And, yeah. <laughs> That's the only thing you're attracted to. True. The only weird thing I'm attracted to, it's a fair point. Out of interest, Niall, has XQC ever reacted to one of your videos before? He, he did, actually. It wasn't, uh, it, it wasn't one of the game reviews, though. I think it was a video of me roasting him. In typical XQC fashion, he just sat there like a robot and gave no reaction whatsoever. I could see him putting the Utopia video on and then he just, just sleeps through it. <laughs> like, goes, goes, leaves it playing, comes back and it's still playing. To be honest, I personally like when other streamers have uh, given their live reaction to my content in the past. Obviously, going back a few years here. What I don't really care for them doing is then uploading that same reaction in its entirety in order to profit off of doing, you know, virtually nothing. Yeah, that's sort of the main problem. I actually saw a, I saw a YouTuber, Internet Anarchist. Uh, I, yeah, I'm not really too familiar with his content, but he actually did a test where... This is only one video, by the way. It's not like this is the norm. But XQC asked him, or more like his team, can he react to your video on stream? He goes, yeah. And then he had like some stipulations like credit, all that kind of shit. But he actually noticed that the views on his video like dropped as soon as XQC released his reaction of it. It like it, it only got around like a hundred thousand views. So it's yeah, it's bizarre, but certainly one of XQC's arguments is that he promotes he's giving promotion to these channels and he's offering like that type of promotion. More people are aware of the video and therefore they watch it. But that is just I think that is incredibly overstated. Especially considering that the viewers have already seen the video live on XQC's stream. They're not going to then go and click on the video that they've just watched and watch it by itself again. Obviously, it does promote it a little bit, but at the end of the day, this is kind of somewhat negligible in comparison to what he's gaining from reacting to this content live. That said, I do personally enjoy when other streamers watch my content, I'm very happy to do that. When the JStation video was released, I had several of these streamers uh, message me and ask if they could, literally ask if they could, they don't have to, 
ask if they could react to this video live, even though it's on Nerd City's channel. I was like, yeah, sure, no problem at all. If they had then taken that reaction, live reaction, and uploaded in its entirety onto YouTube, and then that video then got more views than the original video, I'll be pissed off. Yeah, I would definitely be pissed off. Yeah, and that's happened multiple times. It's funny how it came back into, you know, everyone's kind of turning on React streamers. and I think, so I think they they've should. always disliked them, but like they've kind of been in their own bubble. I mean, even I'm yeah. guilty of it as well. Like I haven't live streamed in like two months, but you know, like, like I would react to stuff. And I mean, I, I try to... One thing I, I'm always terrified of when I do like a React Dandy is like I just sit there because I, I literally have like videos in my head playing of like Hassan eating his fucking whatever his mum cooks for him or XQC just like drinking a litre of fucking cola and just saying nothing. So I always make sure like I, I need to add something like every couple seconds. Like sometimes I might be like a bit of a try hard and try too much, but I'd rather at least keep the air like something being said than just like, you know, silence. There was this one YouTuber uh, and he did a video on Tarkov cheaters, like hackers. And that video went kind of viral and all the streamers were reacting to it, like Critical, Hassan, XQC, a bunch of others. And then he actually did like a tier list of everyone that reacted to it. And I was the only one that he put in S tier. Is that because you actually stopped the video and didn't eat pizza whilst the video played? Yeah, I think I do the opposite. I pause too much. So I'll literally turn an eight minute video into like a 50 minute video with the amount of like pausing and just like tangents and shit like that. I mean, you wouldn't have had much of a challenge to beat out these reaction streamers because despite the fact they're called reaction streamers, they don't really react. They literally just sit there and watch. And if you're lucky within an hour long video, you might get a couple, three, four, pauses and then saying something the last a sentence xqc just pausing and be like D dude dude what does that mean and just like <laughs> chat what it, what does it mean, dude? it's funny how it got back into the spotlight because it was you noticed it was because jack's films did the video on sniper wolf and her reactions adding li next to nothing and then it was all um bub games tweet about xqc that started it and now it's all over critical mudaha etc channels just because of a tweet saying he stole from limino i feel like the debate around the topic of reaction content not just reaction streamers but reaction content in general has been going on since you know back 2014 maybe even longer than i remember when idubs made his video on jinx it is like a new wave of jinx jinx was doing a much better job reacting to content than xqc was and even then back was then, he yeah but back then people were thinking like this is shit this is just dog shit content he's just laughing at, at every time every yeah. time every segment he's just <laughs> he just laughs and that's it pauses laughs moves on but xqc isn't even doing that <laughs> he's just eating <laughs> when jinx uploaded a video of him reacting to whatever he was reacting to he at least made jump cuts. There was at least some editing involved. Let's not give any credit to Jinx, though. But when you compare him to those React streamers today, like, actually, Jinx was doing a much better job. Well, I'm not saying it was a good job, but he was doing a much better job than the reaction streamers today. Yeah, I think, I definitely think, like, in retrospect, Jinx got it way too hard, considering, like, the, the streaming meta. I mean, he was the scapegoat, too, what, for... Yeah. He was, like, the biggest... He was the biggest, biggest reaction channel, so. I don't think he got it too hard. I feel like that's the wrong phrasing. I'm just saying that when you compare what he did to what other streamers, YouTubers are doing today, then it was nothing by comparison. The, just the fact that XQC's full stream is getting re-uploaded with him leaving to get food left in there, and then it's monetized. He says the editors get the money from it, which I think is true, but it's still... He's still profiting and stealing views from the original yeah, creators and, and he's stuff. adding next to nothing like i always when i get vods uploaded i always say to like editors like like cut out any time i just go for a piss or something because like it's just pointless yeah, it's not hard to do so like I, I i kind of understand i i don't like justify it at all but i can kind of see where they're coming from because like usually with me i won't have a video play when i go for a piss or something and then i just think like okay i need to run it like get this piss out my fucking bladder as fast as possible and then I come back and my views are probably dipped like a hundred just because, you know, those people aren't getting constant stimulation. But yeah, then you'll have people like Hassan that literally will start the video and then leave. Like, you know, when the context of whatever video is actually being played and stuff. I mean, of all people, Ethan Klein actually made a great rebuttal to that in his uh, podcast with Hassan when this point was brought up. And he said, okay, instead of pausing it and losing your viewer base, why don't you just play some music? 
play something else and then get back to the video after it. It's not difficult to alt tab. Yeah. And it's a great point. It's absolutely true. And even Hassan was like, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that's a good idea, actually. Fair enough. I would I would actually do that. That's a, that's actually a really good point. Put some like TikTok sensory videos on screen or Subway Surfer and see if your views dip when you come back. They probably just go up. <laughs> you don't need to keep the video playing. You can pause the video, put something else on, whether that's music or whatever. Just put another person's fucking... video on. <laughs> Maybe oh, no, I was not that. Say, like imagine We're at the point. if I needed to eat or something, right? And I just put on like another streamer stream, but they're like doing the same thing. They're putting on another streamer stream because they're gone as well. Just this rabbit hole of like seven streams playing at once. You could put your own video on. True. Then, the, then you can't really be accused of stealing your own video. I mean, and even when XQC does pause it and gives his opinion on the subject matter. It's just no can understand. Exactly, it's just fucking gibberish. <laughs> Apparently, I was speaking to some people and they said, like, who watch XQC on a regular basis, I don't know why. They said, you do begin to, like, understand what he's saying. It's like it's an actual language, a stone yeah, language, Yeah, like it's all its, its, own its own spider tongue. Yeah, it's a stone language. spider tongue, stone language, all of its own. All it takes is, like, practice and listening to it on a regular basis in order to be able to translate and speak it yourself. So last episode, Pari, which you weren't here for because you were yeah, in yeah. fucking Sweden or wherever the fuck. Where, where were you? Uh, uh, Amsterdam. You were getting Amsterdam. hookers in Amsterdam, that's right. Yeah, red light district. <laughs> yeah, little boys in Amsterdam. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true, isn't it? In any case, Canon we were event. discussing the popular British children's television show <laughs> back when I was fucking a kid called yeah. Teletubbies, which you did MLG what? Teletubbies on. Were you were fucking a kid? <laughs> <laughs> you wanted your, wor your wording there back when I was fucking a kid. <laughs> I, I did not misspeak there. I did not misspeak. All, I feel like you did. There. I feel it's like right. there's we've a all been there. Freudian slip there. Anyways, Pyro made his MLG Teletubbies video, so he knows what I'm talking about here. The kids, the young children that were consuming this show on a regular basis <laughs> began to emulate the Teletubbies <laughs> by speaking like the Teletubbies and basically speaking the gibberish, uh-oh, po, yo, ro, whatever they were saying. I can't really it remember. Oh, yeah, that po. type of shit. I'm not going to try and imitate it, but it was like that stuff. These weird Teletubby monster-like creatures. I mean, it was pretty scary. The whole show, the sun was like a baby. Like, what the fuck was that about? What happened was they grew a speech impediment, or rather their communicative skills were deeply damaged by this... Um, so you think XQC is this generation's Teletubbies? Is this the... That is what I was <laughs> trying to get to, yeah. So all the little kids watching XQC will begin to speak like XQC at some point, which is basically gibberish. And this will affect not just their language skills, but all the other subjects they're studying in school. So really, XQC is a detriment to society, streaming in general, and the world, and should be killed. <laughs> yeah. I, I believe that. Yeah. Fair enough. It's a good point, right? Yeah. Okay, subscribe to the Patreon. <laughs> $5 a month. Well worth your time, well worth your money. It always is, it always will be. You get to speak to Pyra Cynical and he might try and groom you in one of the Discord chats. You get an exclusive episode a month, which isn't much, but that's double what you get on YouTube. So... <laughs> but yeah, we're doing loads of things there. We're talking about making a Minecraft server. That will never happen. I know, it might. It might, actually. The guy I'm speaking to who's actually, to be honest, server member, Patreon member. Pretty keen to do it, so, you know, it might happen. Just trying to think of an end. We, I can never think of a good ending here. To end, we never end it right. It's always a fucking disaster. I'm trying to think of a worse one. Uh, Pyro just says he's looking at Princess Porn. Princess Peach Porn. I literally, we ended on a fart, and that was it. Oh, you shit yourself? I didn't shit myself, I, oh, I but took, I that was, Yeah, that's... And that was it. That was it. <laughs> Bye. Wait, why don't we get ChatGPT to write the outro? Ah, oh, perfect, yep. How to end an incredibly disorganized podcast. <laughs> write the outro for a disorganized podcast. And that's a wrap for today's episode of the To Be Honest podcast. We hope you enjoyed <laughs> this chaotic roller coaster of a show where disorganization reigns supreme. We True. want to extend a special thank you to our unique trio of hosts, the lovable cartoon duck, the charismatic furry, and the wise but unpredictable elderly man with dementia. Together they've brought you laughter, surprises, and a connection unlike any other podcast out there. We apologize for any confusion, tangents, or moments that left you scratching your head, but hey, that's what, to be honest, podcast is all about. True. Embracing the chaos, 
celebrating the unexpected and keeping you on your toes. Join us next time as we explore new realms of disorganization, share bizarre anecdotes, and stumble upon surprisingly profound discussions. Oh. You never know what's in store, but that's part of the fun. Stay tuned for more episodes that will leave you saying, to be honest, I have no idea what just happened, but I can't wait for more. That's a good Thanks one. for listening. <laughs> and remember, in the beautiful disarray of life, the To Be Honest podcast is here to guide you through with a smile and maybe a little gentle confusion. Kill yourselves.